What's up guys, my name is Adrian from the Deviants and today we're going to be reacting to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood episode 40. So last time we got kind of a, a run back of what, what's been happening um, with the plan between Scar, uh, Miles, the Elric brothers, Winry, Doctor, the two um, bat, bad guys. So basically what they're doing is they're making it seem like Scar has taken Winry hostage. But in actuality, Scar, Winry, the Doc, uh, May, I think her name's May, and then the two uh, bad guys. I forgot what their names. Did they even say their names? I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, but they're Kimmy's men. Uh, they, oh, and Waluigi. They are going underground through the mines to finally end up in Fort Briggs. Al is chasing right behind them because he needs to inform them that um, Olivier is has been sent to Central, so they're no longer quote unquote in charge of Fort Briggs. So they need to figure out you know what to do. While that's happening, the or Miles, Ed, and um, everybody else, along with Kimberly and stuff like that, they're stuck in like a like a house to wait until the storm rolls over, I guess. And I think that's, I think that's about it. Oh, uh, Olivier is in Central, so we might get a little bit more of Central. So Olivier, maybe Mustang, I don't know about Hawkeye because of the whole like pride situation, but I guess we will see. I think that's about it from, from what I can remember. But without further ado, Let's get straight on into it. Make sure to support the original content as always. All right, let's get going in three, two, one, and. The only thing we have to worry about is holding down this fort. As for the general, well, I'm sure the tigers in Central will make sure she's taken care of. I don't know. You may enter. Sir. Oh gosh. Has a, has a wrath look in his eye. Just what have you done? Pardon me, Your Excellency, but I simply don't understand how you can employ someone as careless and incompetent as General Raven. Immortality. The history of this country. Your Excellency's identity. He told me all sorts of things without any prompting. I assume you'll be needing someone to fill that fool's vacant seat. <laughs> what a smart person. Interesting. I like the way you play. Very well. You can have General Raven's seat. Although our leader might be gone, we still stand as one. We act with one will. That's the Fort Briggs. Oh gosh. Revolt! What goes? The dwarf in the flask? What kind of Lord of the Rings? You need once more. And then Sterling. Salim? Oh. Salim Bradley is a homunculus. Oh, oh my gosh. That's crazy. Hey, you there. Oh no. It's all right. Oh my gosh. Blood. Backstory. What do I get for acting surprised? Why does he sound like Oscar? You show no fear. From you Ruby. Like What's your name? I'm number 23. I exist today because you gave me your blood. Let's see. Number 23 isn't going to cut it. I think I'll give you a name of your own. Well, how about Vaughn? Vaughn Hohenheim. How does that sound? Sounds so pretty good. Hohenheim, huh? Don't you even want freedom? Are you going to live out the rest of your life as a slave? Oh, this is a cool transition. You, man? That was sick. In that case, you're no different from me. Okay, then. What is it that makes you happy? Well, I'd hate to, to be, be free. Of asking too much. But I think I'd be happy if I could just leave this flask. That's enough chatter. Immortality. Oh, is that the the Shing dude? Growing impatient Maybe. in your old age? How lamentable, King of Xerxes. Oh, okay. This is Xerxes, all right. Never mind. What are you digging here for? Uh, irrigation canals. Okay, okay. He even cares about the well-being of us commoners. Yes, he does. <laughs> you 
incredible. The king will achieve immortality. I don't understand it. You said if we were in the center of the circle, we wouldn't be out. The true center of the transmutation circle is right here where you're standing. It is? Right now, you and I are at the center of everything. Oh, well, he just kind of got screwed over, didn't he? Willard. McDonald. Reinmeier. Tony. Mayo. <laughs> All the crazy names and then Tony. <laughs> Using your blood, I created a receptacle for myself. Nice. Finally, I can walk on my own two legs. I appreciate your cooperation, Owenheim. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Hohenheim just got used. Von Hohenheim? Okay, I like I like to suggest that I knew it. <gasps> oh hey, long time no see. They were fine boys. <coughs> what is it? Izumi, are you alright? Oh you're told me get your medicine. May I have a look at her? Oh oh wait, is he gonna heal her? Oh, <gasps> Are you not gonna heal her? Izumi! Calm down, dear, please. I'm all right. He shoved his hand into you. He, he did. But my breathing, it's easier. Your organs were taken away as a testament to your sin, and they cannot be brought back. But I did rearrange your entrails somewhat to improve the flow of blood. Who am I? I am a philosopher's stone in the form of a man. Dang. That's what you say it has incredible power. I would have expected it to be a little bigger than that. It's not. I've never seen one that's much bigger than a small pebble. Maybe it's possible, but I would never want to see it. Well, I remember back, I don't even know when, I think it was like in the, in the 20s of episodes. I don't know when they, but like in the early ends of Full Metal. I, I did not like Hohenheim whatsoever. I thought Hohenheim was going to be the bad guy. I thought, you know, in the end of the series, it's going to be like the Elric brothers versus their father, so on and so forth, right? I did not have any, um, I guess, care or hope for the father. But now, now I feel like the father is a good guy that is plagued by you know, being used, right? So we, we, we saw not everything, but like a quick rundown of his past. So he was a slave who somehow used or somehow got his blood into the dwarf and the flask. I don't, I don't remember if it, they explained how it came to be. Did his master do it or did the dwarf somehow like, um, like mesmerize him or brain control him to do it i don't know but that's where it started so the the homunculus gave number 23 a name and basically gave him enough knowledge to become a to stop becoming a slave and become more of an apprentice so you know he he quickly went up the ranks because of the knowledge um the dwarf and the flask gave him and then i'm just giving you guys a quick rundown to try to figure out like if i got all of it down so basically the um hohenheim was around xerxes time and Hohenheim became one of the top, I guess, I wouldn't say researchers, but like one of the top people so that he can enter the, the temple or the, the king's place. So the, the flask, the flask dude, uh, kind of tricked the king to sacrifice everyone in order for the king to, be, to obtain immortality. But in actual, in actuality, 
when they did the sort of sacrificial thing. It wasn't the king that was in the center. It was actually the flask and Hohenheim in the center. And the homunculus used it in order to... Or used all the souls in Xerxes in order to, one, give him a body. And him um, sort of invincibility. And then give Hohenheim sort of the same thing. The invincibility or you know, the ability to live forever. Quote, unquote. I... I definitely think that the being invincible or not being uh or being able to live forever I I think that's a there's a, like an asterisk at the end because you know people people like lust and and people like that have have shown that you could be sort of unkillable but then use all your resources in order to become killable right so i think hohenheim and the dwarf what's what's his actual name flask dude father father what the freak am i saying so hohenheim and father i feel yes they can live a long time yes they have sort of immortality but i feel like there's a there's an end right? there's a finite number of lives they can use in order to become immortal or spend using whatever, right? Um, I feel like that might come to play. I'm not sure. Or maybe even Hohenheim might be the only person that could somehow kill father. Like, so, so the father said that half was given, half the lives that were sacrificed was given to Hohenheim. And the other half was taken by the father. So I don't know whether or not um the power well the powers the amount of powers were included like does the father's power level and hohenheim's power level equal out or is the fact that the father is a homunculus and uh hohenheim is a human kind of tip the scales in a little bit part of me thinks at the end it might be hohenheim versus the father and hohenheim might have to sacrifice himself in order to beat the father and then for, or therefore, you know, kind of making, especially Ed, put Hohenheim in the good graces because Ed does not care much about the uh, Hohenheim. So that's where I think it's headed. Um, we didn't really get much about things going on in the present. We did get a little interaction between Olivier uh, Mustang and then Mustang and Hawkeye and Mustang now knows that Salim is a homunculus but he doesn't know like the powers that Salim has so I feel as though Hawk or Hawkeye needs to somehow get across to Mustang that Salim can like literally look in the shadows I don't know it was a, it was a crazy episode I really liked it and that was my reaction to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood episode 40. If you like my reaction, make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys want me to know anything more, put in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.